Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to Thugging It Out. Thugging It Out is a platform where we acknowledge, experience, and overcome real life issues in a positive and healthy way. This week, we got a special guest, you know, one of my fine ass girlfriend, girlfriends, major influencer, and owner of Never Care, you know, the people that got like those everybody type merch. So yeah, go ahead and tell the people what's up. Hey y'all, hey, it's your girl Chloe, big mama Chloe. <laughs> yeah, let me tell y'all about my girl, y'all. She is like the one of the funniest, like littest, friendliest person I know. And y'all remember Kiana, y'all know they cousins, so you could just only imagine how she is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, let's get into some things. Chloe, like, how are you? Like, I'm good. I'm good today. I've been having a great month, I would say um so yeah I have no complaints how are you I mean I'm good you know I'm just thugging it out and just taking one day at a time I feel like most recently I've been like in this space well I didn't want to do nothing I don't know if it's like the weather changing but yeah that's coming yeah it's like I don't know I just haven't had like no energy so that's kind of where I'm at on that but I know we had spoke about your brand uh well, your company never cared. Like, what is your ultimate business goal and how did you like come up with it? Okay, so Never Care is a clothing brand that I brainstormed up a few years back. Um, basically, I wanted to put out something to the world that um that I knew that would be like a positive um have a positive effect on people Mm -hmm. so I was going through the motions of what did I want to do and how did I want to um how did I want to be seen in the world um so I came up with three letters I mean three words uh everybody type and um it can go for so many things but mainly I tell people that it's like a body positivity um campaign so with that it's just like uh I've struggled with caring about what other people think of me for a long time um I read a book a couple of years ago called the simple art of the subtle art of not giving giving a fuck fuck. yeah yes (laughs) I read that book and I was like oh I don't give a fuck no more (laughs) here I love that book too like I you know I'm into reading so that book that's yeah, so I'm sorry about that. It's a lot of bogus it's all, cars coming down the street. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, but that book is really a good book. And I really can't believe I'm it's like a shock to me that you say you cared about, you know, what other people think because you just come off like you have like all this confidence in the world. Like, how did you get there? Because of course I'm pretty sure everybody not like that just right off the jump but you are well from the outside looking in that's how I kind of perceive you and I'm pretty sure a lot of people could agree like Chloe she got all the confidence in the world like where did that come from thank you um I feel like it came from back like back in the day when I was younger you know we we now we older so we look back on our life we see things that happened to us and the things that were said to us and certain things um ended up like you know, um, sticking to my skin more than others. So um, I used to have like family members that used to always say something about fat this, fat that. And you know, that's normal in the black, black community. community for family, mm-hmm. yeah, for family to say that about kids and things like that. But I think that it really did. I never really had confidence issues where I felt like I was ugly or my body wasn't, um, it wasn't like I was saying in my head, like, uh, you know, I need to get a, get some surgery done or something like that. But it was more so of the, um, especially becoming a mother, just real, just looking at the way that my body changed over the years and this and that. I used to have a flat stomach. It was, it was going on, but, um, yeah. And it was just like, do this really matter? You know what I'm saying? So um, when I came up with the slogan and I attached it to myself, I was like, yeah, this, 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 the one, this is a confidence thing. This is a, 
um, this is a movement where people are going to feel good about themselves when they come across this brand. And I think that's true. I think a lot of people do gravitate to just certain stuff that just make them feel good. It's like certain things that I'm just going to buy and I'm going to support Absolutely. just because it make me feel good. So by you having that and you actually, you know, walking the talk, I already know your brand is going to take off. And Girl, you know, I got so many know. plans for this brand. It's ridiculous, but um and I don't mind sharing certain things with you either so um I wanted to go ahead and um talk about like the backstory of it so never care um everything I do has everything to do with everything that happened to me if that makes sense mm -hmm. so um never care it came about because like the name I was like on some I want to do, I want to do something that is like, you know, fresh and fun, whatever. And, um, I had a friend who basically he died by suicide. He died by suicide and he killed his wife. Mm -hmm. And when, um, that happened in 2016, it broke me. Like, couldn't imagine that this person would do something so tragic, so traumatizing, um, I got diagnosed um, with multiple um, with multiple mental um, issues or whatever. Well, not issues, but you know, mental disorders. Whatever you call it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, PTSD was one of them, and like I'm always that person that cares so much about the people that I'm around or the people that I love and this and that. So um, when he died. Uh, the school that we went to they came up with this hashtag it was love yours so um with that it was just like I just wanted to put something out there um promote mental health with um mental health awareness I'm sorry my tongue's sad and then I also wanted to shed light on suicide prevention um, so right now I've been working on doing like little, little things like volunteer work, um, to get a better understanding of how to actually talk about it, talk through my story and things like that. Um, so never care is really like, it's a lie. Cause I, I say, I know I don't care, but I do. So I think everybody care, but I think it's just what I like about but it's, it. It's the, it's the attitude though. It's yeah, like, like the, the thing about it, like, yeah, we all going to care. We going to let certain stuff get under our skin. We going to experience different things, but the ultimate goal is to not care. Like, fuck it. Like who gives a fuck? And exactly. I think that's really what your brand speaks to me. It's like, shit, I never get, you know, you might say, Hey, you know, I don't like the way she raised her kids. Or I don't like her podcast. I don't like the way she talks. I don't like the way she dressed. Like, bitch, I never care exactly like, that's and that's and that's another thing when people see everybody type they be like oh you everybody type no hell no not by a long shot people don't like me <laughs> okay <laughs> but in the end this is it, it's a it's a message for things other than how someone portrays you it's about you know you just being comfortable in your own skin whether you got to be be or whether you natural whether you want to work out whether you found with the way you are like it's everybody type it's for everybody yeah and I think that's something like as a society that we really do need to kind of move towards because everybody different even though everybody in mom getting bbls so many people that's like shaped up the same mm -hmm. I still think that we gotta kind of show a little more of the different body types the different people the different way people live their life it's all okay and it's crazy because me and Romeo was just sitting there talking earlier about like the little stigma that people got on people, you know, that they think women just automatically supposed to get married and have kids. But it's like certain women don't want kids. Mm -hmm. and certain people don't want marriage. And that's OK. It's like, why do we feel that we got to put people in boxes and say, this is how you're supposed to look. Live your this life, is what right. you're supposed to do. And it's like, shit, why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree because at the end of the day, it's like we on this earth, we all different, you know what I'm saying? And it's so much stuff to be focusing on other than the way this person chooses to look. First of all, we sometimes can't help the way, well, we can't help the way we genetically made up. 
Mm-hmm. That's one thing or whatever. Some people take their genetics, the body that they got from they from their family and they run with it. You know what I'm saying? Like thickness run in my family. So everybody be all on me, like you so thick, you so thick. And I'm so tired of that being a conversation. Like it's not about me being thick. I'm a whole person and, and I, I got a great man. Like look you at don't that, that's, to that's that. one thing a lot of people think they do not think about that. Like a lot of thick people, but like, I'm so happy you said that because I think everybody be like, I want to be thick, I want to be thick for the attention, but people don't talk about the the downside of having the attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 plays a, a major role with the brand itself too, because like I receive male attention um from oh I was probably like oh I remember I it was the first time I put on a two piece um swimsuit girl I was about like eleven we was at the beach up north and you know I had found me like some friends to run with and the girl was a little bit older than me. Mm -hmm. so yeah so it was like some dudes they was trying to talk to us or whatever and I told them that I was 11 and that girl like once they left she was like why you telling them how old you was I'm like huh like what you mean like girl I'm 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 living in my truth Mm -hmm. and but at the same time when I was young it was like it kind of stuck so I used to lie a little bit but I used to only lie and say that I was 14 once I turned 14 (laughs) it was over with I was my age I'm cool with being who I am but yeah the male attention um that came from just me getting on a train getting on a bus and walking home because I'm from the low end so Mm -hmm. yeah I was raised in I guess the hood but it's it's just um it's something that men need to start to think about and start to take heed to because at the end of the day, like, I'm not saying that grown men out here talking to, you know, 11 year olds, nothing like that. But the way you come off to a woman is it, it, it does something to us. Like Mm -hmm. it was a, um, it was a post. It was like, um, what did it say? It was like, basically saying like, if men were gone from the world, um, for 24 hours, what would you do as a woman? And it was like a lot of women on there, they were chiming in, like, I would just go outside and um, I would go outside at like three o'clock in the morning or something like that. Like just saying certain things. But then another girl was saying, like, I would go to the beach in my two piece without a cover up on. And it's just crazy how society, how it plays out. I just um, I just want to be a light to the world, though. So um with my brand, I'm I'm coming out with a song. Okay. Yeah, I'm an artist. Rap and singing. Me. What what you gonna be? I be rapping. <laughs> okay. I mean, you never know. I mean, you got a nice voice, so you might have some pipes over there. I ain't know. Girl, I've been wanting to make a song since I was a kid. So now that I got this brand, it's like, you know what? I'm just gonna make the song for the brand so it could get some exposure. Um, as far as like the releases with my inventory. I'm about to um, post up to start accepting custom orders okay. so that people could tell me like what color and what, um, and um, you know, what color the shirt and what color the words they want. And also I'm working on like my logo design too. Now, let me tell you now with this song, once you come in video. Oh no, baby, let um, I, bet you, I bet you better know, you better, you better be ready. You I need know. to know your schedule. You need to be coming up here because I need you for photo shoots and everything. All right. <laughs> just, you know, just at work because, you know, right now I ain't got nothing to do. And I, you know, even though I'm, you know, a damn and bitch. And then you know I'm a twerking vibe. So everything <laughs> about me is is related to twerk. So it's just, it's going to be. I know it's going to be lit. I'm so excited. Like, yeah. oh, girl, what you waiting on? Go ahead. Hit the studio today. Go get it done. <laughs> we ready. And the crazy part about it is I recorded the song before. But I didn't take nobody with me to record. And I didn't know the guys that was helping me. But mm-hmm. they were, um, they, well, the one dude that was actually helping me, like, camp, come up with my ad libs and stuff. He was real cool. Um, the other guy was too, but I was more so thinking about the ad lib aspect of it. Um, but, yeah, it was, um, it was all right. 
the way the song came out, but I didn't like the quality of it. So I want to re-record it. But for now, I'm going to do it on, um, I'm going to just go on TikTok and um that's the way to go TikTok. and post it up and see if like you know the first couple of or whatever part that I decide to um you know actually put on there if it's gonna do like how I want it to do because like the, the algorithm the algorithm with TikTok is decent because anybody could really end up seeing your stuff so yeah just let me know because you already know uh I come out of retirement I know <laughs> baby I already know you 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 number one pick oh okay but uh with your brand and all that how do you think you juggle that with like motherhood because I know you do have you know Carter and Uh who is Carter he's in what he's in third grade now girl third oh my god these kids get so old he's in third grade leaving his homework at school girl uh he wanted them you know you gotta get to to school so bad you got to give them some grace. They ain't used to school. I think that whole pandemic little situation that we had going on just fucked up our kids. Where they just like, man, fuck school. So we got to reprogram them and to be like, okay, we back in school. We going to do right this year. Right. And I don't, I don't know. Like I would say the pandemic, I do give him grace for that. Like, because that's something I tell him that all the time. That's something that no one had to really experience before. Like that was the first time for all of us. So now that it's time for you to, you know, buckle down and do what you're supposed to do in school. Excuse me. Um, I just think that um, it's, it's, a, it's, how can I say this? The balance between the two is not hard at all. Um, having a business and raising my son, it's not, it's not hard for me right now. Maybe because my business I'm getting it off the ground and I'm you know um kind of small right now but as far as um oh what was I about to say um Carter in school I just feel like it would be a lot more easier if the support system that I have like they're great but if um it was more people like in his ear like how I'm in his ear like on his ass basically so that's that's one thing that um I would say is like a struggle for me and I think that's my problem too with like the black community when we was growing up I feel like we had like a village girl school it's not even the same like they might as well rename school by the time we had kids like it's so crazy to me because I remember growing up we definitely went to school. We had teachers that was like very involved and they really cared about us regardless of what, what background we came from. Cause everybody, you know, especially in the hood, we come from different backgrounds. So every, like the teachers was really hands-on, but then we came home to like a block of people that was really making sure we did our homework. And it wasn't necessarily like the block. It was our aunties, our grandmas, you right? Know, just like that village that was like, okay. You can go out and have fun, but you definitely going, before you do something, you're going to get that homework done. We're going to make exactly. sure we're going to take care of our business. But nowadays, it's like everybody look at you like, well, shit, that's your child. But it's like, but what happened to the village? The oh, village that oh. it takes. Yeah. That, that's the way I was raised in my school. Like, that was something, that was actually like they, um, they little slogan, um, it takes a village to raise a child mm-hmm. or whatever. So in, in, in the essence, I feel like, um, I feel like I got to take my goods with my bads because at the end of the day, um, it's not parents that really, um, it's parents out here that really don't pay attention to their kids. Like how, you um, pay attention. yeah, how my circle pay attention to our kids. So at the end of the day is, 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 it's give or take is, it's, it's going to be a process, but, um, I'm in for the challenge because you know I I did it. I had a baby. <laughs> That's the all we can do is just continue to ride the wave. But what do you think your parenting style is? My personally, Ooh. like um, I think I'm a mixture of both. Like I tried the gentle parenting shit. <laughs> I mean, I try my best, but I feel like sometimes my kids just try me, especially Jamal. No, nah, they're not even Jamal. It's that little girl. It's yeah, really, I knew this when it says Riley. It's, it's it's really her. It's like. I be trying. So what's your take on it? 
Um, I am not a gentle parent at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm I'm sweet to him. Like when it's time for him to get up for school, instead of like me, you know, steady, steadily going back and Carter, get up, get up, Carter. I go in and I tickle him. Like I tickle him to he start laughing, wake up a little bit, sit up. Then it's time for you to, you know, go get in the bathroom and things like that. But um I I don't know. I he he tells me I'm hard on him, but I don't I don't mind that being what you what you come what you take from it like at all. Because um it's people that on the outside looking in, they'll look at me and Carter's relationship or see how Carter is and they'll feel like I probably need to do more. So um I just feel like my my parents and style it it is cool. Like I'm a cool parent, but I'm not trying to be cool. That's just how I come off. I mean, that's just how I am. And I think that's like one of the struggles for like single moms is that. Well, I don't know if like Carter's dad is like present. I'm I'm not speaking on that. I'm just saying as far as like from the single mother, like where your child is mm-hmm. ultimately with you, you got to play both roles, and it's like. You can't really be like the sweet, nurturing mom all the time because it's like, not only do I have to nurture you, but I also have to discipline you. And with discipline, I have to have you have structure. I have to be on you. I can't be nice mom and just let everything sound all the time. I have to check you and get you in order. So I feel like that's just like another one of those little struggles that people just don't even talk about. And it's hard. It's a struggle because I remember with like Jamal, everybody know, I started out by myself from day one. Mm -hmm. so I have to constantly be like not playing with you like I'm not doing this with you you get in trouble it's gonna be consequences not gonna be really and I really tip my hat off to like you Kiana like people that I know that are literally by themselves in the parenting because um as much as I want to complain about my you know co-parenting situation is like for what like at the end of the day he's he's there you know he when I tell him something that Carter does um as far as discipline it goes he get on Carter um but it's just like um a lot of people they they um I don't know it's 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 that's a that's a real touchy subject because I would say I was gonna say something but it's like no you can't even say it because it's a lot of people a lot of women out here that are by themselves Mm-hmm. so it'll be like but she ain't by yourself though but regardless of the help if it's not healthy help and it's not benefiting your child do it really matter do it count exactly like for one thing for me is like I'm the only person that really ever um set my son down and really read with him so that he could learn to read mm-hmm. um that was a struggle for me that was a real bad struggle because I came up in Catholic school um when I was first teaching Carter his like alphabet when it came to writing and things of that nature it was like certain things I wanted him to catch on so quickly and he and he didn't or whatever and I was like getting real upset about it and I had to change the way I was you know teaching him the way I was guiding him and so that um that that's the that's the thing for me like me personally I could say like as far as doing schoolwork with him, I'm I'm the one that's there doing everything. So when it comes down to my co-parenting situation, that's the part that makes me get upset. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so. I think that's one of the things as far as even with co-parents, like even me and Romeo be sitting there talking about like how, you know, co-parenting, you know, just certain situations, like how some women, you know, just the difference, like, with the custody situation, like, the 50-50, or, like, how kids are primarily with the mom, and they only go with their dads on the weekend. It's, like, Mm -hmm. moms have every, they have to do everything. Not only are they sometimes working or building businesses, or even got to take care of themselves, they constantly got to, you know, do schoolwork Monday through Friday. Got to take them to school, drop them off. They got to feed them. be accountable for where this baby at at all times. Like, that's one thing that fathers don't, like, fathers that don't have their children that don't live in the house with them you're not worried about no babysitter situation if I got something to do and you got something to do like I don't know it just it always falls on the mom 
yeah, regardless it, it, to how present or even like the child support situation and men be like well i take care of the child and i get them on the weekends that's like the bare minimum because regardless of the fact you only getting them about what two days out the week and what you pay a little fee but what about the whole 24 hours every day from sun up to sun down waking them up taking them to school feeding them helping homework or you know extracurricular activities like people don't think about that and when I say you the shit, girl, you is the shit. Because I'll be looking at Jamal like, oh, I can't wait to Riley get into her shit. <laughs> girl, thank you. I'll be trying because you know, I got to keep these kids busy. Like, Girl, yes, you are a great mother. Like, I know that for a fact. I stand on it, bitch. Thank you. I appreciate it because I'll be trying, you know. I don't know. Like I say, parenting is some shit that don't nobody know the best of. But... I feel like, with me, I'm just standing on my shit. I do the best I can for my kids. And that's one of the main reasons why I be like, everybody just need to leave Chicago. Like, move. Ain't nothing there. It's so much easier. Else no, you place. didn't get on this. Oh, like, this just... I'm just, like, no, put that in. I'm just... I mean, just come on. Like, it's so... because no, at the end yeah. of the day, I want to go. I want to go so bad. I don't even want to be here for the winter. Um, but financially I can't move right now. So that got me more like humbling myself. Like, okay, well, since you can't do it right now, like make sure you make your plans for it and, you know, do your research. Cause I'm, I'm me personally, I'm scared of like natural disasters. I don't like floods. I don't like hurricanes, earthquakes. I've never experienced it. Don't want it. And so, um, yeah, that's that's been my thing. But like, I've definitely always um wanted to explore or just you know settle down somewhere else. Cause especially with the way Chicago is, it's it's ridiculous. Yes. Yeah, Did you hear about the shot? Um, they shot up the uh softball field. Yeah, in Washington Park. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that was just crazy as ever. And then some people that um I know, like my my cousin, she knows some um people that was there. And it was like, I'm friends with them on Facebook and they was just talking about how traumatizing it was. It looked like a, um, like a movie scene, but it was real life. And it was just like, you know, what can, what can I really do in Chicago and really feel safe? Mm-hmm. And when it comes down to that, it's just like, it really is time to, you know, make your moves and figure out somewhere else to be. I left Chicago because I just don't feel safe and, I ain't gonna lie, my son looks just like his that whole yeah. back sure child to reap the repercussions of, of you know a parent. Uh yeah. Yeah. well parents, period. But like they, that's like I don't I ain't gonna put my son in that situation. And regardless of that, it's like even with Chicago, just living there, you could be doing anything in some kind of you. It's not safe. So that's that. I still love my city though. Like Yeah, I, I do love my city, girl. Oh, I was just looking at the it. Some pictures from downtown. I'm like, oh, don't nobody else got a downtown like us. Okay, it's nothing like it. It's always going to be home, but I just like it better when I can come visit. I can come, experience, and I'm like, all right, I'm out. All right. <laughs> That's all I do. But I what is, like, what you think your God honest truth about motherhood? Like, would you recommend how <laughs> you recommend? Are you grateful that you're in it? You wish you would have done better? Because... I mean, I just want to know. I'd just be so interested to see other everybody' perspective on it. Because if it was me, you know, I always say, "I wish I would have waited." Like, and honestly, lately I've been telling people, like, I highly don't recommend it. <laughs> no, so oh my mama, I would let somebody know in a second. Don't do it until you until you absolutely ready. Do not, because you gotta really. It's not even you that you're thinking about, of course, because you you bring it in a life or whatever but it's the person that you having it with or whatever like you that's it's it's it's, that's having a baby is more tricky than a relationship so it's like you know I just you know I I don't know I would say that I don't recommend I mean um motherhood for people that are like way younger um Mm-hmm. I feel like the age that I am now, if I would have waited to have my baby, like, you know, a couple of years ago or something like that, I feel like my mindset would have been so much more different. And honestly, I was more immature when I 
did get pregnant I was more so like yeah I'm, I'm about to have a baby and it was like the baby aspect of it like girl this baby gonna be a baby for a, a split second <laughs> exactly what you gonna do when they turn five exactly. so it's like um it's nothing that I ever regret but it's just like certain things I just feel like did I you know put myself in this predicament and um I, like did I what's the word I don't want to say that I fucked myself up because I didn't fuck myself up. But like, I, I just feel like it could have been better if I would have waited um, a couple more years. But at the same time, like me and my son, we've been growing together yeah. and like, it's been, a, it's been a journey. Like, and I'm, I'm not even gonna lie, like due to like the things that I have going on myself, like certain years are, you know, foggier than others and, um, and this and that, but at the same time it's just like girl you doing it and this boy is a a real gem like he he is, he is carter, amazing carter is a good kid yeah carter is a good kid and that's another thing that make me kind of because i want i want a big gap i want to have another baby but at the same time i'm like i had such a good time with him while he was a baby like it was um it was smooth sailing like i didn't have to i didn't get shitted on like certain things like I, it just never happened so it was just like hmm, maybe I should just say my say I got my one and done but you, I don't know as as time go past I I have a goal like maybe um six to eight years for another baby oh so you want more kids how many just one more you thinking about like five I just want another pregnancy I, I kind of want twins but you Ooh. know I can't make that happen so Jumping the deep end. Yeah, 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 whatever. I waited, you know, Riley and Jamal is like seven years apart. And how do you feel about that gap? I thought it was going to be easier because, you know, everybody was like, well, you waited a long time. But I, after experiencing it, I see why people had their kids back to back. Because mm-hmm. it's it's two completely different things. It's like you got one child that's older that needs help with homework. They need that extra attention. And then even though... You got that jealousy thing, even though you still that you like you older, you got, you know, you expect more of them because they older, but they still a child. Mm-hmm. You got to sit there, get them ready for school, car seats. And now it's like Riley's not at school yet, but Jamal is. So you think it's like, at least if they back to back, they both in school. It's like, are they both gone. Now I got one that's been able to fend for themselves and I got one that I got to take care of. Yeah. And that's another thing that I would say, like, if you're not ready I, I would say you're not ready for motherhood if you're not ready to teach a child like the hell you having kids for if you're not gonna sit down and teach these kids how to read write and do some math and other things like it just don't make sense to me um mothers that are out here that just have babies and literally just only I mean I understand um everybody doesn't have the same background as I do Mm-hmm. um but at the same time it's just like that that should be I common do, sense yeah. like yeah, if start you, holding them accountable like you need yeah. to be, like regardless of your situation these kids did not ask to be here so how about we do a little bit better in raising them but mm-hmm. i guess that's a topic for another day people don't want to they're gonna be like Girl. okay but what does you know i know you talked about your mental health but how exactly do you cope with that because I know coming from like the black community and like a black household it's a little harder to talk about mental health people don't they think it's like a joke and then they just they don't take it serious and they really don't understand it so how do you like go through the motions and cope with that well mental health has been something that um something that has like um that I've known about since I was a kid um and that's another thing like I don't think that everybody has that background like where they actually experience to really know the um you know 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 about certain disorders or anything like that like some certain people don't learn about mental health until they're an, an adult and then certain disorders don't get diagnosed until you're adult too mm-hmm. but um as far as um my upbringing and mental health is just like we living in this world and it's 
it's so much that happens um outside of our household so with that being said it's just like you gotta you gotta find your peace like as me being my own person like I don't like to feel like on edge I don't like to feel um uncomfortable I don't like to feel awkward or whatever so I do whatever I need to do as far as you know my 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 medication or anything like that like I do what I need to do to to keep myself afloat um I don't know if I answered your question oh so uh you kind of did but how did do you do you personally educate like people around you and like do your family kind of understand like okay that's what it is because I know personally for me when I tell people especially like especially my parents when I talk to them about like my anxiety and my depression and this, they look at me crazy. Like, what do you mean? Like, what are you depressed about? Or where did that come from? And it's like, y'all, but, <laughs> but they don't <laughs> understand it. And it's like just taboo to them, especially like just a lot of black people in general, like people just think it's a joke and it's like, it's real life. Like this happens all the time. Like people, like I know people that like undiagnosed, like I could look at them and be like, this is mental illness. Mm-hmm. they be like uh-uh they be looking at you crazy like what are you talking about ain't nothing wrong with me but it's like bro you need help yeah so I do definitely um talk about mental health more so than not um to anyone um because first of all it's in my family so um sometimes a family member might be going through something where they need to be hospitalized or something like that and at the end of the day, um, it's harder to talk to the older generation. I definitely do agree with you on that. Um, because it's something that I feel like they don't, they don't really know, like they know about it, but they don't have the knowledge behind it. So they don't really know how to, um, to deal with it. And at the end of the day, I just feel like, um, mental health, so yeah, like family, I, I guess, I ain't gonna say really family. I think it's just black people. We just don't really understand uh, mental health. Yeah, and I agree. Um, with me and my, um, with me and my journey, especially by being diagnosed, um, I'm just like, at the end of the day, this is not something that's going away. So um, when I was talking about my volunteer work um, earlier, like I'm uh, tomorrow, actually, I'm going to um, volunteer for a mental health walk. Um, And my aunt had just told me about um, the organization that that's um, hosting the walk. Mm -hmm. She had just let me know about them. So um, I think that I'm going to start looking up their resources and trying to see it any way like that I can get involved um in that way just um being more so around that type of setting where people are normally talking about it so that I can get more knowledge on how to speak on it okay so if somebody asks you like how would you explain like your situation how would you be able to just like dumb it down and be like this is this and like when I say with like me and Romeo for instance like I went through postpartum I went uh I realized that I had first of all I didn't even know I had anxiety and I went to the doctor to give it my sense was like bro like I can't sleep and I feel like I can't breathe like I feel like somebody's sitting on my chest and my mm. doctor was like that's anxiety like and I was like damn I'm 20 what Riley, I was about 25. No, I was probably like 24. And I'm like, I never knew that because that's something that we never talked about. I never experienced before. And even moving forward to like therapy and dealing with depression. And I had to really explain to him, like, it's not necessarily you. It could just be anything that could trigger it. It could be some type of situation where I don't feel safe or I see something or and it kind of gives me some type of flashback to something that don't make me feel good and then all of a sudden I'm in this depressive state or I could be you know especially like with the pandemic like I got social anxiety like I don't like being around people and like in crowded spaces I have to start feeling some type of way when my chest start hurting and it's like okay I had enough I'm ready to go 
Mm-hmm. And he be like, I just don't understand how people could go through that. Or even days where like sometimes I don't feel like getting out of the bed. It's like that's depression. But then he by not never experiencing it, he'd be like, I don't see how somebody could just wake up and not, you know, and have an really attitude. Nothing. Right. And it's like, but that's not me just being upset. That's depression. So how would you basically explain it? So I can know, or, you know, anybody else that's listening can know. Well, for me, um, it's easiest for me to talk to people that, um, that I want to, you know what I mean? Like, if I want you to know how I'm feeling, then that's when I will explain, um, my feelings. But as far as, um, me and my diagnosis, like, um, so, I got diagnosed with bipolar disorder and I was just like, okay. Um, it was, it was, it was so fresh. I promise you when they told me that shit, it was like a new life had started. I felt like a whole new different person and not in a good way. It was more so like scared as hell. Like, how do I go on with my life? Because like you hear people talking about bipolar, like all the time like they oh that that she bipolar blah 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 blah, blah. like or I'm bipolar like people just be saying it like letting it roll off their tongue like baby do you really have episodes right. <laughs> like have you, you know what episode? it is like right so with 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 me and my um with me and my diagnosis um I I do stay on top of my medication and um I have had a few episodes where I wasn't myself um or I was too much of myself, if that was, if that makes sense. Um, I have, I've, I've experienced manic episodes. So that is where like, you're over the top, like happy or, um, just really sad. I want to say really optimistic. Like, so it was, it, the, like the things that I went through, um and to come back from it and just I I just feel like I'm blessed because that's something that even though like I was experiencing an episode um and I would be saying things that um didn't make sense or something like that um I was still just like in in the back of my mind still be praying like I have a praying spirit and Mm -hmm. I'll be praying like my um that I you know get back to myself um as far as depression I've experienced that on many times um but um I don't really have really too many uh, what I don't have a coping mechanism for um depression only because it's like I try not to get like that so (laughs) if I notice myself getting into a mood where I'm not feeling I'm not feeling like living not like on some suicidal but just like on some I'm not feeling like doing my everyday normal, you know, routine or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, I just try to get myself out of it, but it's, it's different for everyone. I will say that everybody's that everybody that got diagnosed with bipolar disorder don't experience the same thing that I experienced. So that's why that's another reason why I feel like mental health is something that is um, not really it they don't they don't really go into it because it's just like it's so it 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 differs from person to person so much that you know it's not something that you could just like pinpoint like oh this person does this this person does this and this person does this so they have this Mm -hmm. um so it's just like um I I I know that I'm I know that I'm diagnosed so I just I accept that I take medication and at the same time I am a positive person I've been like that all my life so I just try to um just try to stay afloat I do journaling um I want to get into art I want to tap into like an artist side like just start painting and shit like that but different um hobbies that people have like on a day-to-day basis and working out is something that I I hear <laughs> <'cause> I <don't laughs> it's something that I hear works really great about on you know with your mind do you do therapy um, um yes I do I I have my therapist and he is amazing and he is um he's not a he's not a black person 
most people that I know um, that are women that want to try therapy, they try to look for a black woman. So, you know, it could be someone that you're talking to that's like you. Mm -hmm. Um, And I get that. um, But at the same time, like when I was in school, I I took psychology classes. So um, I didn't graduate. So I'm not like an expert or anything in the field, but at the same time, I know what to look for. So Mm -hmm. I'm just grateful that the things that I did when I was younger, it, it, you know, it made me the person that I am today. So how did you, um, well, you said you had like a white man therapist. See, I have a black woman therapist and I had, I had to go through like a different, a few different people to, I guess, feel Mm -hmm. comfortable did you have to go through that too? Or was he like your first person and you was like, okay, you dope. I like you. Or was it like one of those things where you had to just try it out? And like, no, I don't like this. I'm gonna try it again. Yeah. It, it was definitely something that I had to keep trying because even one day I, well, a couple of sessions I had, a, I had a black woman and, um, she wasn't, she wasn't, I don't know. It kind of, she came off as like judgmental, like, oh, you smoke weed do you, how much weed do you smoke? Like, I understand that that's questions that you got to ask, but baby, the way you ask them, they make me want to not talk to you. You make me feel uncomfortable like you the police. Like, come on now. Right. So um, when I met my, when I met my psychiatrist, I went in, in person and um, I mean, not my psychiatrist, my, um, my therapist. I, I went in person and we talked um you know I just felt out the vibe and from that point um now that I do my sessions um probably like twice a month sometimes three times if I'm at if I call them and ask them to you know pencil me in um we do like telehealth um Mm -hmm. appointments so it's just on the phone so it's just like a regular conversation and um I would tell him things that that has happened with since the last time we talked and um like we'll basically like sort out the the feelings that I have and I know like sometimes I might call and you know be looking for an appointment because I'm feeling like super overwhelmed and like when I get overwhelmed it's like it's a lot you know what I mean because it's 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 overwhelmed already but the fact that I have a diagnosis attached to it it's like I don't really know where the hell these you know I don't know how to sort through these feelings so me and him once we talk and um we go through like the things that I did or things that I said or whatever whatever the case whatever we talking about in that session and when I say he makes me feel so much like um it's like confirmation like because he'll tell me like oh well you need to give yourself grace or yeah. um give that person grace or like anything like um it w- with the overwhelmingness the last thing I could remember was it was about my my parents and my motherhood and I just felt like I was at a point where I just didn't feel like I was doing good enough and that mother yeah, lord I hate it yeah so he had to like really talk me out of it and really just let me know like you know if you really struggling um the thing that he suggested was like I set up a schedule for my son and have my son go you know move off that schedule so I didn't take his advice but I I think that that's a really good um (laughs) I think that that's something really good to implement. And that's something that I do have a goal on, um, on doing within these next couple of weeks, like just grabbing, grabbing some paper, making a schedule for the days that he go to school and the days that he don't. So it'll be two different schedules and we just going to move off that. But, um, but the, the therapy, it works for me. Um, I heard someone say that therapy doesn't work for them. But at the same time, they still found someone to vent to and to talk their problems out to. So I feel like sometimes therapy might not be for um, for people to, you know, just be in that that closed off setting or that closed off space. But at the same time, it's really important to always have um, someone that you can trust to to vent to. 
Yeah, I, first I want to just thank you for like your transparency and just your vulnerability because like I really appreciate it because I feel like I put you a little bit on the spot, but I just thank you for your honesty. But as far as no, you ain't put me on the spot, I feel like at this point in my life, people that call me bipolar all my life, like literally all my life, and not even like on some. I just and I and I really feel like the people that that say it out their mouth like y'all don't know what the hell y'all talking about but it just so happened that I ended up getting diagnosed so it's like okay whatever I got bipolar disorder let's 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 move on from here like I'm still a person I'm 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 normal I know that I'm a normal person so it's just it 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 just has um an effect on me I my feelings my emotions you know I think it just shows that you're human because I mean regardless of the fact of you having bipolar disorder or not everybody got something wrong with them and we cannot just and I think that's the thing that just irks my nerves because it's like everybody got something wrong with them regardless if it's diagnosed or not somebody has some type of struggle you have something that's you know not right and I'm not saying that saying that we all like you know, we're bad persons or we mm-hmm. all this, but somehow, some way we got some type of trauma. We got some type of mental order and that, that just comes with life. It just shows that we are human. Oh, that childhood like, trauma is, is something, ain't it? It is. And it's crazy. Cause like, as you grow older, it's this constant reparenting yourself and really trying to see what it stems from. You see all these habits you picked up and you're trying to figure out where they come from. And then everybody sitting there making it seem like, oh, well, you this. And they want to put, you know, stigmas and stereotypes and put us in categories when it's like, that's really not that. It was because of this. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that was a, I did do that. That was fucked up. I did behave that way, but it's because of this. And I feel like we all get that something in us like that. Cause like sometimes yeah. I could be like rude to say people like, girl, you have no filter. And I'd be like, that's just because I never had nobody really just kind of cuddle my feelings. It was always, it is, you know, I, my parents were straight shooters. It is what it is. This is that. So I kind of just picked up the thing is like, that's how I am. Not even realizing that I got to have some type of compassion and empathy for people just based off of that's how it's supposed to be. And kind of not necessarily, but <laughs> but I mean, you do have to get, but, some I, but I know what you mean. Compassion. Because at the end of the day, it's like, you know, um, the way that we're brought up, like the things that we do, like second nature, like the way that we talk or our responses to the things that people might say to us, like it might come off as, I mean, it's, it's second nature for us to be the way that we are, but at the same time, it's like, it takes a certain type of person to really, to really, to, to self-reflect. I don't know if everyone self-reflects as much as I do or you know but you can tell once you start talking to someone but because I don't know everybody in the world that's why I said I don't know if everyone self-reflects because you know certain certain traumas and, and things like that and triggers and things like you're supposed to overcome that some people just um identify a problem and then they just be like well that's just the way it is and it's like no oh, baby get us it's a problem it. you're supposed to fix it <laughs> yeah like that's the thing like I read something about triggers and it's like nowadays everybody they mama want to like glorify glorify triggers and yeah, so they trigger me down. especially after the song girl when Janae came out with that song it yeah. was over with and it's crazy because somebody broke it down like do you not know understand that a trigger is an unresolved wound so you basically mm-hmm. see them sitting there saying like, yeah, I'm triggered. But it's like, bro, you you could stop being triggered if you just try to heal your wound, figure it out. Like mm-hmm. go there and stop just putting a Band-Aid over. How about you put some peroxide on it, some neosporin on it and heal it. And healing, and and healing hurts. Healing hurts. Healing hurts. And that's healing why hurts. people don't want to go through that pain. It's like, bro, would you rather suffer every day going through the motions? Mm-hmm. And I think that's some kind of that we just all struggle with. I struggle with it. Like, I think I suffered in silence a long time. So now that I'm kind of coming on the other side of it, everybody look at me like, girl, who are you? And I'd be like, girl, I'm trying to figure that out myself. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a lifelong process. People don't, life is life and it's a journey. So, I mean, it's never ending. And as long as I'm living, I'm gonna keep evolving. So when it comes down to like certain things, like never care, like, 
okay, you know, I have this clothing brand and I'm talking about mental health and body positivity and suicide prevention. But you know what I mean? Like it might've been sometime back, you know, before I even thought to start up a business, you know, I might've been the type to fat shame person or whatever. And, And it's like, people need to understand that people do grow, people do change. And, um, and, and, and it's and it's inside of all of us to evolve into better better versions of ourselves. I'm just happy to hear it because like I, I always say, I don't want nobody around me that's not trying to do something, trying to do better. Like that whole, because I ain't gonna lie, we all went through our toxic phase. I think everybody, y'all, ev- you saw it firsthand when we was like legit just going through it and didn't give a fuck. We was really sitting in it. So I'm just so happy to see like the growth, like within you, within, you know, just everybody. And when I say like the growth is very visible and I'm so excited for your brand because it's something that we all need. Like we need that little reassurance of, you know what? I'm, you know, I never cared. Everybody type, like it's fine. I love that you love it. Thank you. (laughs) So yeah, I think that's going, you know, wrap it up here I think we kind of talked they ears off but I really want to say thank you girlfriend thank you thank you so much for having me I I'm appreciative when I first seen your podcast come out I was like what this is so her this is so her so yes I love it thank you you're welcome and y'all have an amazing week and be sure to shout whenever care wait a minute I forgot how do we oh, let's, 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 let's do yeah. platform let's do right. platform yeah, exactly. yes how yes. do we find never care so never care is on instagram for now i'm trying to work on a website but i'm not all the way technically inclined <laughs> so um my instagram for my page now is shop dot everybody type um on instagram or you can look up never care llc on facebook that's like the little like page um and yeah i don't want to really have people follow my personal pages okay that's kind of how. <laughs> but i am big mama clo on all platforms like big mama clo came okay. from me being a mother and that's just what we do okay the big one not the little one okay because that's just period <laughs> all right so y'all make sure y'all go follow everybody's hype on instagram and definitely be on the lookout because we got to get this merch because yes. it's dope but y'all have an amazing week and remember to be grateful be blessed be thankful but most importantly keep thugging it out peace <laughs>